Unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica from the scrapbooks of Adrian Freita. When it comes to being a combative midfielder, there can really be a discussion about Jamaica's football, especially in Western Jamaica, without mentioning the name Winston Twinibog Anglin. The Mount Salem native who came to prominence in the 1980s representing Montego Bay Boys Club in the St. James Domestic League was robust and combative and his tackling skills plus his ability to kick the ball with both feet made him one of the few complete footballers in Jamaica's football history. While his career is chock full with many highlights including scoring in Jamaica's historic 2-1 win over Trinidad and Tobago in the 1991 Caribbean Shell Cup final in which he outplayed TNT midfield idol Russell Latopi who was then a professional in Europe. For me, one of the highlights of Anglin's career was the 1989 incident in which he broke his foot in a game against Seabart Jard Park and was back playing within seven weeks of sustaining the injury. In fact, some reports suggested that he was juggling the ball even while his foot was still in the cast. Having personally witnessed the incident in which he broke his foot in a tackle with Seba United's midfielder, Capel Natty Lawrence, to me, it was a major miracle that he was able to return to the game so quickly, showing no fear as he came back with his trademark, robust and combative style. In this edition of Lest You Forget, I will be looking back at that angling injury from a story I wrote for the Western Mirror which was published under the headline, Angling Making Speedy Recovery. The story read as follows. During the playing of the second leg game in the recently concluded St. James FA semi-final showdown between arch rivals Wadada and Siba, Wadada St. James and Jamaica football suffered a terrible setback when star midfielder Winston Twinibog Anglin broke his right foot in a tackle with a Seba player. Since the injury to Anglin, who was the toast of Jamaica's football following his two brilliant goals against Puerto Rico in a recent game in that country, not much has been heard about the local idol. In a bid to keep the football-loving public up, up to date with the progress of angling since his injury, I paid my visit at his home in Mount Salem. When I caught up with angling, he was in a jovial mood, rapping with two friends. I got the impression then that he had come to terms with his injury and was not thinking too much about it. According to Anglin, the report he got from his doctor was that his foot was healing satisfactorily and the car should be off in the next six weeks. Anglin said he was eternally grateful to Dr. Aaron, Wadada's team doctor, whom he said made sure that he got the very best medical attention and showed the type of interest in his case that really made him feel like someone special. When quizzed about the fact that he was now unable to work but still had his basic needs to satisfy, Anglin said that thankfully he did not have anything to worry about because the management of Wadada has been taking very good care of him. Commenting on Wadada's failure to reach either the St. James Division 1 final or the NPN final, Anglin said he was most disappointed and expressed the view that with sounder preparation and more application, the team could have done better. With regards to the upcoming Caribbean Championship, Anglin said he would believe Jamaica would do well if proper game plans are worked out and adhered to. Anglin said that he intend to watch Jamaica's own game and further said he would be more than happy if he could get a chance to watch games played abroad. Being incapacitated, Anglin lifestyle has changed somewhat. Nowadays, he has, to, he has to be contented with sitting around at home listening to music, watching videos and watching his baby daughter or hobbling around on his crutches to his favorite corner to play ludi or rap with his friends. For his many friends and well-wishers, Anglin had this to say, Don't worry too much. I will be back in action come October and November. According to Anglin, he intends to regain his previous form as early as possible because he definitely wants to continue presenting his club and country. 
Had Anglin not gotten in trouble with the law in the United States, which saw him being incarcerated for a period of time, he would have represented Jamaica many more than the 83 times he did. But for those of us who saw him during his prime, we were able to see and appreciate one of the most gifted footballers Jamaica has produced. In look While Anglin will be remembered by many as that gifted midfielder with a lion heart, for me, seeing him bounce back for a broken foot in such a short time and then coming back to dominate the game speak volume of his capacity as a gifted footballer, which makes that incident one of those unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica. Unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica from the scrapbooks of Adrian Furter. Before you go, please remember to subscribe.